What's up everybody, it's Max Brown here to break down Drake London's game winning touchdown. Great throw by Keaton Slovis, unreal catch by Drake London. But in this video we're gonna dive into how exactly that throw came to be. It might turn out to be the most important play in the Pac-12 season, which I know is crazy. It's only week one, a lot of ball left to play, but the play was that important. If you need a refresher for what play I'm talking about, game winning touchdown, Keaton Slovis to Drake London, check it out. Here's Slovis. All right, so an unreal play, we all know that. But what I want to do now is I want to hop back to the second quarter in which USC runs this exact same play. ASU runs the exact same coverage. It's almost literally the, the same exact down and distance. And it should have been an interception. And it's interesting because what should have been an interception in the second quarter ends up being the game-winning touchdown in the fourth quarter. Let's check that play out right here. All right, it doesn't take a rocket science to realize that Keaton gets away with one right here. But what does go unnoticed is the fact that this is literally the exact same look. Same play, same look offensively and defensively. You have uh, Drake London in the slot. You got a cover two shell by ASU. The down and distance is eerily similar. It's third and eight instead of fourth and nine. And the biggest difference here is Keaton's just late. He's late on this throw, and he's not late on the game-winning touchdown. He gets the ball out of his hands. But now with that in mind, now with both plays in mind, watch it again and kind of compare the two. Keaton's there, and he hangs on just a little beat, right? He's not, he's not extremely delayed, but it's enough of a hitch to allow this Mike linebacker to get in play and, like, my man... This should be uh, an interception. So it gets away with it right there. They come back to this same route, different concept, but same route the very next quarter, and this is where he pays the price. Keaton Slovis to throw it on third and nine. And intercepted at the 10. Whoa! Merlin Robertson lays out. So I know on this one, it's a different concept. It's a different formation. It's two by two instead of three by one. You have Drake London here rather than, uh, and, and he's not being thrown to, you're thrown to Jude Wolf. So it's, it's, it's different. Merlin Robinson's the linebacker. But from Keaton Slovis's point of view, it's the exact same thought process in that he's looking for this bender route to take the middle grass right here. If he, if he feels like Jude gets a clean release off this linebacker and can wrap around, he's going to throw this ball. He obviously gauges this wrong. That's why it's an interception, but that's the thought process. And with that in mind, let's watch it one more time. Jude cuts inside rather than wrapping around. That's, that's a little bit unique and kind of traps Keaton a little bit. But Keaton gets greedy, tries to fit, fit it in there. He got away with it early on, tries to fit it in there tightly. Doesn't get it. Merlin Robinson picks the ball off. We'll get the back view here as well. And it's going to be the same action, right? If I pause it, he's wrapping around trying to take this middle grass. The same exact idea that ultimately ends up winning the game for USC. So right there, right here, he's thinking, ooh, I got an open man right here. I'm going to fit into this tight window. Merlin Robinson undercuts it. At this stage, this is, the, this is a mistake by Keen Slovis. You would expect him to kind of mature and realize this and just go outside, right? I believe that's Amon Ross St. Brown outside. Just go outside. That's a wide-open receiver at, college, at, the, at the collegiate level. Get him the ball and move on. Don't get greedy trying to get bender routes in the middle. He doesn't do that. Ultimately, interception. This guy's open. That's where the ball should go. But what's impressive is he nearly has a crucial mistake early in the second quarter. He comes. They come back again with a very similar route. He pays the price for interception. So it's twice. He almost makes crucial mistakes. But what ends up happening late in the game? Graham Harrell trusts his quarterback, calls this route again, trusts that he's going to respond and make the right decision. And as we all know, the end result was very uh, friendly for Keaton Slovis. And let's check it out again one more time. Here's Slovis looking, fires, it's out! Touchdown, Drake London! What a throw! All right, we've seen the game-winning touchdown a few times. Let's break down exactly how it happened. Red line's the first down line. Offensive picture right here. ASU's in a two-high, cover-two structured look. Could use a little bit more, a uh, little bit more whiteboard. End zone's like right here if you can envision it. You got Brew McCoy to your left, your three by one formation. Now here you got Drake London, Almond Ross St. Brown, and Tyler Vaughns. And I'll get to why it's interesting that 
Brew McCoy is by himself down here. Stephen Carr's your back. And you got a very soft structure by ASU. When you're Keaton Slovis, the second you get a too high structure, you know that this route on this side is out. It's not happening there. He's going to be working the right side of the field down to Stephen Carr uh, to his back if things get too soft. His first progression, and this is more of like an alert. And I don't, I don't know exactly how Graham teaches it, but this is going to be an alert right here to Drake London. If he gets a clean release, they feel like he can win the middle. This is obviously the first progression. As we saw, this was the touchdown throw. But assuming, and if this is better coverage by ASU, which I'll, which I'll get into, if this gets covered, he's gonna take his eyes to the outside. He's got Tyler Vaughns on a dig route, which is great versus too high. Why is it great? This safety's gonna drop back deep, and he should find a window to cut underneath. He is wide open in this play as well. In fact, watch this play again. Look for Tyler Vaughns on the outside. Look how wide open he is. Trojan fans would be kicking themselves if, if, if this route to London didn't get completed. You'd be saying, gosh, just go outside, hit it to Tyler Vaughns. Check it out right here. Here's Slovis looking, fires, it's out! Obviously didn't come to that. Touchdown to Drake London, but it's, it'd be one to London, two to Vaughns, and then I put it kind of 3A and 3B. 3A is to Amon Ra down here, which is interesting that he's kind of like a little decoy in this uh, in this route because, I mean, he's USC's best receiver. But if they get really soft, hypothetically, if Keaton, Keaton gets the ball on time, he can get it to Amon Ra, catch it at five, and then run for the first down. That's a scenario. Or 3B, if things get really soft, he could have he could have taken his eyes back to the left and hit Stephen Carr. If this was a one-high picture, and let's say the safeties were rolling down here, that's where Brew McCoy would open up because you'd have more defenders on this side. This window right here would be a lot more open if you had safeties rolling the other direction. And Keaton Slovis might take his eyes to the left instead of the right as a result. But I want to touch on this. This is really poor coverage by ASU by three guys in particular. The Will linebacker, check that, check that, check that, check that. Mike linebacker, this corner, and just it's interesting to note where the Will linebacker is. And I'll dive into all three right here. Mike linebacker to start. He does not get hands on Drake London. He's probably getting reamed in meetings right now. There is no rerouting. There's no disrupting this route. It allows Drake to run straight up the field and get the middle of the grass. Drake's too athletic, too big, too fast to make that happen. Especially if you know you're not the best in coverage as a Mike linebacker, you have to get hands on. That's your strength, is, is your strength. You have to get... Uh, you have to disrupt this, make it harder on Drake London, disrupt the timing, and force Keen to maybe go outside and give, you, give, your, uh, give, yourself, give your defense a chance to make a play there. That's the first guy I don't like. Second guy is this corner. Once again, we just saw it uh, before. Tyler Vons is wide open in this route. As a corner, you have to have situational awareness. When it's fourth and nine, yes, they could throw a fade ball, but I should be expecting a dig route. USC runs it a lot. Tyler Vons runs it a, a lot. He should be driving on this dig route. He should be right in his hip pocket. He should be, he should be expecting this and contest this throw. Obviously, he didn't get to this point, but I don't like how soft this cover this. I don't like how soft this corner is, given that the sticks are right here. That's the second guy. The third guy to note that's interesting is the Will linebacker. Rightfully so, he's really soft. His alignment starts at like eight yards. And then he drops back to the sticks, right? I got no problem with that. He's going to be sitting right in, in, in this window right here, make it really tough on the quarterback. But what I don't like, or what's just interesting to note, it's not really poor coverage, just interesting to note, is these defenders get so soft, right? They're, they're uh, preventing against the sticks, sitting right at the first down. But as a result, Stephen Carr's wide open. If, if Slovis said no, it's not working at Drake London, no, it's not working to Tyler Vons, he could take his eyes back down to the left hit Stephen Carr for a little swing route, and I, if I'm a bet man, I'm 100% taking Stephen Carr one-on-one, -on -one, and realistically the corner is even more deep like this, one-on-one -on -one with, with this Will linebacker in open field, he's going to juke him out of his shoes, he'll pick up the first down. It's, it's funny to note that because an easy swing pass late in the game, fourth and nine, you're not really expecting that. If you watch it again, which I'll show right after I say this, watch it again. Look how open Stephen Carr is for the swing pass. Check it out here. Here's Slovis looking, fires, it's out! Here's Slovis looking, fires, it's out! And then the last thing I want to note on the ASU front that I don't like about this play, right? 
Four USC receivers, right? They're playmakers. If you had to rank them, if you're, if you're ASU walking into this game, you're most scared of eight, then 21, then 15, 21. But the point I'm trying to drive home is four, he's never played a college football game before. Yes, he's a big time recruit, but if you're gonna let anyone beat you, have it be number four if you're ASU. But the coverage they call, and I'd be interested to see if, if you asked the defensive coordinator if they were expecting Amon Ra to be here or Tyler Vaughns to be here singled out. But that's obviously not what happened. Bruised by himself. And ASU really has one, two, three guys, when it's all said and done, accounting for Bruce McCoy right there. They have a guy dropping hook curl. They got a, a corner dropping soft into cover two. And they got a, a safety, obviously, guarding the deep half. I wouldn't mind that if that's Amon Ra or Tyler Vaughns. And hindsight's 2020 for sure. Last thing I want to note real quick is a lot of defenses here, when they get a three-by-one formation, They'll have this backside safety guard against the number three receiver going vertical to prevent exactly this, in that if Drake London goes vertical, this safety will scream across, look to knock his head off, and get involved that way for exactly this reason, to prevent attack in the middle of the field and not having too many guys on the other side. So there's a breakdown of the play. It's a concept USC runs all the time. It worked out on their first progression. A lot of guys open. If you're an ASU fan, you got to expect better defense, but credit Keaton Slovis for making, uh, making the Sun Devils pay.